how you can prevent depression and how you can even conquer depression. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to begin with showing you some of the basic causes of depression. You see, depression is not a cause, depression is an effect. So the next question is, where's my why? Why depression? Well, the medical definition of depression is a chemical imbalance in the brain. So what's my next question? What has caused the imbalance? So what I'd like to do is I'd make, like to make a list of all the things that can cause an imbalance in the brain. So an imbalance in the brain can be caused by too many highs. So let's have a look at what causes a high. Sugar causes a high. Hybridised wheat causes a high. Caffeine causes a high. Alcohol causes a high. Drugs cause a high. Tobacco causes a high. And MSG causes a high. It's what's considered an excitotoxin. It excites the nerve cells. All of those cause highs, but they are transitory highs. And what a transitory high means, it does not last. It's a brief high. It's a delusive high. And all of those highs come with corresponding lows. And that's why the book's called Sugar Blues. That's why the book's called Caffeine Blues. And we have another book and it's called Grain Brain by Dr. David Pertmuller and he's a neuroscientist and he shows how wheat is affecting the way our brain functions. What's a hangover if it's not the body basically saying, don't do this to me again? Drugs. How many young people go into criminal activities, even prostitution, just to feed their drug habit? Tobacco. Tobacco is one of the hardest things to come off. We had a lady come and do our health program and she was coming off marijuana and heroin and alcohol and caffeine and she said, don't take the cigarettes away from me, I'm already giving up a whole lot of stuff. I said, well, I, we're not Starlick 13, I can't tell you what to do, but you cannot, you cannot smoke on the property. You'll have to go off the property and it's a long walk and we had a lot of rain. You can imagine trying to... <laughs> so she actually didn't end up smoking a lot of cigarettes that week. I think she averaged about two a day and at the end of the week she said, I feel so much better that I think I'm going to stop that. And I said to her, it's like this, if you give up everything, we can actually do a lot to help your body get quite better. But if you only give half, we can only get you half better. Can you see that? It's actually easier to stop everything. And it is one of the hardest. But we find that our health program, where the guests do two days juices, they have a steam sauna at the end of every day. Um, there are herbs that I give them that nourish, the, that nourish the nerves. It's one of the easiest ways I know to stop smoking. In fact, at the end of one program, um, a German woman, she punched the table with her fist and said, why didn't I suffer? <laughs> oh, I said, I think it was the steams and I, think it, I thought she was going <laughs> to roast me for something. But that's what I find. When people come with patches, I say to them, you will not need the patch. You better to stop the patch because there's still a bit of nicotine going in there. Be better to, to totally stop it because the steam baths, you're sweating it out. And when you have a steam bath in a detox, up to 70% of body's waste can come out of your skin. That's pretty impressive. So that's what the detox does. It puts your body through this massive detox so you're throwing off a lot of waste. But I find tobacco one is, is, is a very difficult to, one to give up. MSG, the damage done from mes MSG, the, the damage to the nerve cells is definitely a low. Now let me just define that again. These highs are brief and the lows are very long. And when someone's in a low, what could that be considered? Depression. So we're looking at what causes the chemical imbalance in the brain. What also causes a chemical imbalance in the brain is lack. So lack of oxygen. Our brain cells have energy cycles in them just like every other cell. 
And every cell that has oxygen has 18 times more energy. So if a person doesn't have enough oxygen and when someone smokes cigarettes, they're not getting a lot of oxygen, then their brain's not getting enough energy and it whew, <laughs> it's not running that well. And one of the causes of lack of oxygen is lack of exercise. Dr. Neil Nedley, in his book, Depression, A Way Out, he says that if he has a very depressed, bipolar, schizophrenic patient, he puts them on seven hours of exercise a day. He says after seven days, they're so improved, they can go back to a one-hour maintenance dose or they can go to a 15-minute high-intensity interval training. <laughs> That's cheap medicine, isn't it? What are they doing when they're walking all day? They're getting more oxygen into those brain cells and we've got one trillion brain cells. And if every brain cell has oxygen, you're getting 18 more times more energy in that brain. Lack of sunshine can cause depression. Now, as I mentioned a little bit earlier when I was answering the questions, when the ultraviolet rays from the sun go through neurochemical pathways, they hit the pineal gland, and the pineal gland releases serotonin. And serotonin is called your mood hormone. If you want to feel good, go and sit in the sunshine. You've heard of the SAD disease? It's, it's um, seasonal affective disorder and it's in the northern countries of Europe. And they're blaming the fact that there's no sun. Do you know what the real reason is? They're on the SAD diet. Have you heard of the SAD diet? Standard American diet or the standard Australian diet? Those diets are very, very low in a fat called omega-3. And lack of omega-3, so lack of fat, can cause depression and one of them is omega-3 and omega-3 is a very important fat that is used by brain cells to function properly. In fact you look at the Eskimos, what do they eat a lot of? Uh, blubber, seal, <laughs> fish, those fish are incredibly high in omega-3 because omega-3 grows in the cold northern countries. And when they eat enough of the na their native diet, they don't get depression. But in his book, um, Fats That Heal, Fats That Kill, Udo Erasmus, he cites a man who went and lived with the Eskimos. And after three months, he became depressed and suicidal and they had to whisk him out because he went and lived with the Eskimos, but he, but he brought his sad diet with him. <laughs> which is high sweet, high weed, high meat, and virtually deficient in omega-3. So what are the sources of omega-3? Sources of omega-3 is uh, walnuts. I think God's got a sense of humour because the nut that looks like the brain is, is the highest nut in omega-3. The other source of omega-3 is flaxseed, ground flaxseed. Grind it up, but don't buy it ground because it deteriorates very quickly. There is a use for your coffee grinder after all. And that's to whiz up those seeds. Whiz them up and pour them on your breakfast. And the chia seed, you know that little tiny dark seed? You can make some very nice chia puddings by just putting a bit of apple juice and coconut cream and stirring it and it'll go like a soft jelly. Sometimes we do uh, coconut cream and Pineapple, that's also very nice, a delicious way to eat your chia seed. So your, your chia seeds are important and your walnut and your flax to get your omega-3 and also they are an important um, part of getting your serotonin. That's what your brain needs to be able to produce it. Um, Another type of fat that your brain loves is saturated fat and the best saturated fat is the coconut. The brain is the fattiest organ in the body. You've heard of grey matter? Well, your grey matter are the, are the cells. And white matter? White matter is the fatty sheath around it. Every cell in the body has a membrane around it which is 50% fat, except for the brain cell. Brain cell 
has a me membrane around it that is 70% fat. <laughs>